I've had some bad days since I started work as a private investigator. But I'd never woken up dead before. It all started the week before, on a cold and wet September day in Ankh-Morpork, the oldest and most depraved of all the cities on the Discworld. But hey, you've got... I'd been working as a PI for a little over a month, and business was slow. Hiring an investigator to look into your business requires trust. And the amount of trust in Ankh Morpork wouldn't fill a cup. And it's a small cup I'm talking about. Sure, people trust that you don't get on the wrong side of the patrician. People trust that you don't walk into the shades alone. People trust that the Assassin's Guild will fulfill their contracts or double your money back. Yeah, people even trust death. Just don't ask them to trust their mothers. Mr. Luton? If I'm not, I should fire the guy who painted the door. So this is what a private investigator looks like. I expected someone more heroic. Heroism costs extra. What can I do for you, Miss... Mrs. Actually. And the name is Carlotta. Okay, Mrs. Actually. Carlotta it is. What's a girl like you doing out on a night like this? I want to hire you, Mr. Luton. Please, call me Luton. Mr. sounds so formal. How much do you charge for a simple investigation? I don't know. I've never had a simple investigation. A tricky one is 20 a day. I'll give you 200 in advance, plus expenses. For 200, I guess I should treat you with some respect. Oh, I wouldn't ask a guy like you to attempt the impossible. What's the case? I want you to find a man named Mundy. Why do you want to find Mundy? Do you know him? No. And this case will go a lot faster if you let me ask the questions. You like to be in control, don't you, Luton? If you don't pull the strings, then you're the puppet. Tell me about you and Mundy. I've been a lonely woman, Luton. You amaze me. You'd be surprised. Shocked, maybe, but not surprised. Mundy is my lover, Luton. Or used to be. He's been away for a while, over in Sort. He came back to Ankh Morpork a couple of days ago on the Milka. But he didn't come to see me. I think he may be having an affair. You're wondering whether my husband knows about it. Actually, I was wondering when you were going to give me the money. My husband passed away several years ago. I hope the poor guy was smiling at the time. Is there anything you can tell me about Mundy that might help me find him? He's got blue eyes, brown hair, and a black heart. You'd like him. Has he got any friends in Ankh Morpork? Does anyone? How tall is he? I don't know. I don't picture him standing up. What was Mundy's business in sort? I don't know. I never asked about his work, and he never told me. Must be a very straightforward relationship. As simple as they come. Where can I find the ship he came in on? Down at the wharf. Have you been there yourself? I avoid places like that. Women and seamen. Uh, forget I asked. This is a bad neighborhood for you to come into alone, Carlotta. I can take care of myself. I believe you. Good. Trust is important. I said I believed you. I never said I trusted you. Don't you like me, Luton? I like a lot of things. I like dogs, but I wouldn't trust one not to bite me. I won't bite. Shame. I haven't been bitten in a long while. I'd better get started on your case. Where can I contact you? I'll be in touch. Be seeing you, Luton. I hoped I would see her again because she still hadn't paid me. Still, it wasn't every day that a beautiful woman offered me a case. Frankly, it wasn't often that anybody offered me a case. And 200 would certainly help pay the rent, if I had anything left over from my bar bill.
sapient pear wood comes from a plant so magical that it is totally impervious to all forms of magic and so valuable that thieves have cut each other's throats to own it. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford a desk made out of it, so I made do with pine. It's a nice desk, though. I had purchased a large indexed scrawl rack to keep track of all the cases I was going to handle. The Monday case made it two. A lot of strange things had happened to me since becoming a private investigator. But the weirdest was the irrepressible sensation that the most important thing for me to own as a PI was a door with my name painted on the glass. Some mysteries are best left unsolved, I guess. I'd purchased the imp-powered coffee bean machine from Cut Me Own Throat Dibbler, the man whose name was the byword for quality. With CMOT Dibbler, you could say buy to quality. I'll say this for the ICBM. It made coffee strong enough to blow your head off. On the downside, the imp tended to use most of the beans to fuel its own addiction. Some days the poor thing was so jittery the coffee machine would vibrate off the shelf. The wharf was on the upmarket side of the river, in the city of Ankh. The Morpork docks on the other side of the river were not a place wise travelers disembarked at. But then again, wise travelers tried to avoid Ankh Morpork altogether. But if you traveled a lot, it was hard to miss, like malaria. I couldn't tell what the crates contained, and frankly, I didn't much care. Outgoing cargo wasn't going to tell me much. I needed to know whether Mundy had brought something with him. A crate. What more could I say? The sailor was busy loading the ship, and I decided not to disturb him. The Milka was a tramp schooner, one of the many ramshackle ships that plied their trade around the Circle Sea. From the looks of it, it should have sunk years ago. Even the rats thought twice before boarding it. The first mate wasn't as hostile as I might have expected, but he wasn't particularly helpful either. Are you the first mate? Ah! Shiver me timbers! Hoist the main brace! Let's start again. Are you the first mate? Hoy! That I be! You're not going to get any money off me, so you can drop the fake accent. Sorry. You know how it is. Some people are stupid enough to fall for that sort of thing. What can I do for you? When do you sail? As soon as we've got her loaded. How much is passage? Where are you looking to go? I don't know. Sort, perhaps. We've just come from there. It'll be a long time before we get back there again. Did you bring any passengers? Sure. We always try to take a couple of passengers. They pay their way, and if there's a big storm, they are very useful as to sacrifice to the angry sea gods. Of course, we tell people they were washed over the side. Do you sacrifice passengers often? No. The captain doesn't like it. He says it's bad for business. I said that we were advertising ourselves as offering an exciting tour of the Circle Sea. But he pointed out that most people would expect the tour to be above the water. If I'd had my way, we'd have thrown some people off the last voyage. Bad omens? 
The old crew had a bad feeling of dread from the moment we set off. Looking at the state of the ship, that doesn't come as a surprise. What were the passengers on the last voyage like? There were three of them. One of them seemed all right, but the other two... I don't know about them. There was something strange about them. What was strange about these passengers? I don't know. One of them seemed kind of... foreign. I mean more foreign than most. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? Doesn't ring any bells, I'm afraid. This is the Milka, isn't it? That's what it says on the prow. It's impossible to read anything written on that hull. Just because you can't read it doesn't mean it isn't there. Reality is subjective, after all. Don't get all existential with me. It was more ontological than existential. That's a really bad habit you've got there. What? Oh, sorry. I picked up a bad case of philosophy in Ephebe a couple of years ago, and I haven't been able to get rid of it since. Just can't seem to shake it off. Normal as anything one minute. Next moment I'm wondering if anything can truly be said to exist. A bit of a drawback when you're supposed to be navigating. Okay, assuming the existence of an objective shared universe, is this the Milka? Yes. Can I have a look on board? No. That better not be some kind of philosophical objection. No one gets on board without Captain Jenkins' permission. Where is the captain? Oh, I don't know. But you could try the Café Ankh. He usually goes there when he's in Ankh Morpork. If it exists, of course. Was there a man named Mundy on the last voyage? It's funny you should ask that. You're the second person today to have an interest in Mundy. Who was the first? A dwarf. He didn't give his name. I don't think he was from round here, though. What about Mundy? What was he like? I don't pry into the passenger's business. But for a man who came on board pretty happy, he seemed pretty unsettled when he left. Not that I blame him. Something was definitely amiss on this last voyage. Do you know where he is now? Mundy? No. Like I said, I don't pry into passengers' business. Unless you actually look through their luggage after they've been washed over the side. Hey, what are you inferring? I'm not inferring anything. I'm implying that you might have had a look at their luggage at one point. If I had, I certainly wouldn't admit it to you. Which either means you didn't look, or you didn't find anything of interest. You better watch your steps, son. It's not good to make accusations like that. Don't worry. Anything we discuss is strictly between you, me, and anyone else I tell. Well, safe voyage, if that's possible. The Café Ankh. The golem was loading wine barrels onto the cart, calmly and diligently. I would have pitied it, but there didn't seem much point. It was just magically animated clay. The cart was being loaded with barrels of wine. Apart from the wine, I can't say I was interested. A good-looking crowbar. It looked like it had a good heft, too. I figured the golem wouldn't notice that the crowbar had gone missing. Not that I'm saying it didn't need it, 
just that I'd figured I'd get away with stealing it. that song again. Oh, sorry, Mr. Luton. It's just I wasn't expecting you to call by tonight, and... You weren't expecting me? It's only been eight years, Samuel. I guess my memory ain't what it used to be. I don't know why Samuel put up with my temper. He could have broken every bone in my body if he'd wanted to. But that's what made him special, I guess that he'd take almost any kind of abuse from the clientele and he'd still be there at the piano, playing better than anyone else in Ankh-Morpork. The pianist, Samael, was one of Café Ankh's greatest assets. Not only was he a first-rate musician, but there was something about him that made you think it'd be a bad idea to start any trouble. The captain of the Milka, Captain Jenkins, didn't seem to be a very happy man. Are you Captain Jenkins? That depends on who's asking. Don't play games. I'm just after a few answers. That song really put you in a bad mood, didn't it? If you're trying to get me angry, it's working. No need to get upset. You need to drink more and think less. If I drank any more than I do now, I'd never think again. That's the ticket. So, you're the captain of the Milka. Unfortunately. Unfortunately? Ordinarily, I'd be happy being a captain of a fine ship like the Milka. But after this last voyage, I'm thinking of taking up farming. Tough journey? I don't want to talk about it. What was so bad about the last voyage? I told you I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes it helps to talk about these things. Why would I want to talk about it? All right, let's put that another way. I want to talk about it, and the sooner I finish talking to you, the sooner you can get back to drinking. By that logic, my best bet would be to just ignore you and carry on drinking. I was never much good at logic. I did home economics at school. I was hoping you'd let me have a look around on the Milka. I was hoping that I was going to make enough money to be able to buy myself a harem of exotic dancers called Chantel. But it looks like we're both going to be disappointed. Is there any way I can persuade you to let me on your ship? Is there any way I can persuade you to go away? I'll see you around, Captain.
my old friend Nobby from the watch. I hadn't spoken to him in ages. Hello, Nobby. Eh, uh, hello, Luton. Um, how you been keeping? I've been worse. Of course, I've been better, too. And I've been a hell of a lot better and not much worse. That's good, isn't it? Don't worry. If Commander Vimes sees us together, I'll tell him I made you talk to me. <sighs> it's not that I don't like you, Luton. I mean, we was friends and all. But it's just... Well, it's just he'd bite your head off if he saw you talking to me. He'd go spare. How you been keeping, Nobby? How's the rest of the watch? Not so bad, Luton. Been keeping myself busy. Been working with Sergeant Colon. How is old fatty Colon? Still fat. I'll tell him I saw you. No, you won't. Okay, so maybe I won't. I was just being trite. Polite. Uh, yeah, that's the one. I guess I never really understood why it was that you didn't get kicked out as well, Nobby. Me? I ain't never done nothing wrong. Don't give me that, Nobby. When you were serving as quartermaster under the Duke of Pseudopolis, it was widely known that several items from the stores were found in your kit. That was all above board. I had all the paperwork for him. Your kit at the time consisted of two warehouses. I just think Vimes had a grudge against me. Luton, I know you're my friend and all, but uh, you took a bribe. Are you trying to tell me you never took a bribe? Never. The ham from Harga's House of Ribs? Evidence. The pocket clock from the suicide in the shades? I wanted something to remember him by. The money in the petty cash box. Mislaid by someone. Misappropriated by you. I never misanthropated anything. I just want to understand why it was that you could get away with all your petty theft and I couldn't get away with one act of weakness. Well, um, you see, um... Just say it, Nobby. I'm not going to hold it against you. Well, I reckon Mr. Vimes thinks that a bit of petty theft ain't something to get excited about. I ain't admitting anything, Mark, you. Nothing's ever been proved. Got compared to some of the stuff that... Go but someone who's taken a bribe, well, that's like allowing the rich to avoid justice. That wasn't why I did it. I know. But you know Vimes. Yeah, I know Vimes all right. What's Vimes up to these days? He got married. Married? He was only ever married to his job. Nah, straight up. He married into the nobility. Old stone face in the nobility. Huh, that'd drive him crazy. Well, he's sought nobility himself now. What? They made him commander of the watch. And we got a great new premises down on Pseudopolis Yard. They're full of patents and vases and all sorts. Full? Well, maybe not as full as when we moved in, but pretty full. I'll have to call round sometime. Yeah, that'd be good. We got a lot more members in the watch these days. And we got a new dartboard. Life in the fast lane, huh? Do you seriously think it's a good idea for me to call around? I mean, Vimes isn't gonna like it. Whatever you may think about him, he's loyal to his job. I can't say he'll welcome you with open arms, but he won't stop you. Do you know anything about some passengers that came into town by ship a few days ago? That's not much to go on. You're a corporal in the watch. You're supposed to have a keen, insightful mind. They brought that regulation in after I joined. Have you heard of the Milka? It arrived in town a short time ago. How long ago? Three days. That's strange. Why? Well, there's been a string of odd murders in the last three days. What do you mean, odd? I mean, this is Ankh Morpork we're talking about. I'm not sure I should discuss the details with the pavilion. 
A civilian, Nobby. How much have you had to drink? I'm as sober as the day I was born. Ah, that's a frightening thought. <laughs> I'll catch you later, Nobby. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. What's that supposed to mean? Well, don't get caught doing anything I wouldn't do. The headquarters of the watch at Pseudopolis Yard. I headed over to Pseudopolis Yard, but Nobby wasn't there yet. I decided to come back later. On an ordinary night, I'd sit around waiting for business. But this night, business was coming to me and bringing trouble with it. Business, I didn't mind. But trouble was an unwelcome guest. And like all unwelcome guests, it was hard to ask it to leave. And by the third day, it was generally wearing your shirts and leaving its stuff in your bathroom. Hello, Mr. Luton. I've been expecting you. I should hope so. This is my office. How'd you get in? Through the door. It was only locked. I know all about doors. Good. Use this one to get out. I have a message for you, Mr. Luton. I don't take messages from strangers. Then let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Al Khali. I don't take messages from dwarves named after cities. My name isn't important. You seem to think it was. I've come to warn you to stay clear of the Mundy case. I'll bear that in mind. Now get out. If you don't stay clear of the Mundy case, something untoward may happen to you. This is Ankh Morpork. Something untoward may be whether I investigate this case or not. Now either you get out or I'll throw you out. Don't say I didn't warn you, Mr. Luton. Don't say I didn't ignore you, Mr. Alcali. A dwarf named after the Clatchian city of Alcali and a threat. This case was getting more interesting by the minute. All we needed was a troll and a member of the undead, and we could open an ethnic comedy on Broadway. Still here? Not for much longer, I hope. Do you know anything about the recent murders in Ankh Morpork? Sorry, I wouldn't know anything about that. I gave the description of Al Kali to the first mate, and he recognized it. Yeah, that's the dwarf who was asking about Mundy before. Strange little fellow. A word of advice. Don't use phrases like strange little fellow when you're talking about dwarves. Especially not drunken dwarves, or dwarves like Al Kali who seem to think they're invulnerable.
The crates on the wharf were built on a large frame, sturdy and thick. Although the crowbar was a lot heavier than a set of skeleton keys, it was more versatile. I guess if lock picks were invented for thieves, the crowbar was invented for the private investigator. I didn't much like being jammed into a crate and loaded onto the ship, but I could think of worse things. Like being jammed into a crate full of rats and loaded onto the ship. What's your name then, little fellow? The hold was dark and dank, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. The hold was full of crates for the outgoing voyage. They were of little interest to me. I thought I could see a label amongst the wreckage. I pulled the label out of the wreckage. It had writing on it that I couldn't understand. It looked lived in. The question was, by what? There was nothing of value in the debris. A bunk bed, like any other. I searched one of the bunks, but found nothing useful, and nothing I wanted to think too closely about. A perfectly ordinary bunk bed. I searched a bunk and found a small scrap of cardboard. It could have been anything. There was a number on the back. Either a six or a nine. It was hard to say. I'd managed to remain hidden on the ship, but I knew my luck couldn't last forever because I'd stopped being lucky around age 12. The first mate looked less than happy, but I don't think he saw who I was as I dived in elegantly on the ark. Fortunately, the crust of the ark was soft that night, and I escaped both injury and discovery, although I needed two baths just to feel dirty. You could say this about Nobby. Deep down, he was a good man. Well, deep down, he was probably a man. Good might be stretching it a bit. Hello again, Nobby. Hello, Luton. Did I disturb you? No, no. What made you think that? Well, there appears to be smoke coming from your ear. Oh, oh that, um, 
Well, I, I, I've been working hard, you see. Working so hard that your ears have caught fire. Uh, don't worry about it, Nobby. It's not like I'm going to report to you. I have been working, see? Oh, sure. I never doubted it for a second. How's work treating you then? Not so bad, Luton. I've been busy though, rushed off my feet. Yeah, I can tell. Do you know anything about a man named Mundy? Never heard of him. Have you learned anything about the Milka? Yeah, not as such, no. You go to great lengths to conceal how little work you do, don't you? Hey. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? Never heard of her. I don't suppose you've investigated the passengers on the Milka, have you? Of course I have. Sorry, but you're not the most... er... Uh, diligent of investigators. I work as hard as any man of my rank. You're the only man of your rank. There's three dwarfs, two troll, a woman and a zombie with the same rank as you, but you're the only human male. I know you're human because you carry a bit of paper to prove it, signed by the midwife. The maleness? I'll take that on trust. Do you want me to help you or not? What have you got? Well, I interviewed one of the passengers. What did you learn? Uh, that's official watch business. You didn't learn anything, did you? Not as such, no. Any chance I could interview this passenger? I don't see why not. She's down in the Cafe Ank now. Well, that's something, I guess. Do you know a dwarf by the name of Al Kali? Never heard of him. How did you know he was male, then? You can't trick me. Everyone knows dwarves don't use the female pronoun. Okay, okay. Mind you, I've always wondered what a female pronoun was. One of nature's wonderful mysteries, Nobby. Is it normally kept covered or what? I'm going to leave it to your rather uninventive imagination, Nobby. Any word on these murders? Nothing yet. But our top investigators are working on the case 24 hours a day. Uh... Nobby? Yeah? Are you one of those crack investigators? Yeah? Boy. Never mind. Just a thought. Can you read this? Give me a break, Luton. I don't know everything. Does this mean anything to you? No. The troll stepped out of the shadows like light was too intimidated to illuminate him. He seemed like the quiet sort, but you got the feeling that if you stepped out of line, you'd get your teeth kicked down your throat. For that matter, he could kick your throat down your chest and your chest through your legs. But I was hoping it wouldn't come to that, because none of my clothes would fit. Fine, Thelma. Sorry, friend, I don't understand. Find Thelma. You want me to find Thelma? Is that it? Well, what is it? A person. 
a thing. Look, if we're going to carry out a conversation, it'd help for you to talk. Find Therma. Okay, okay, find Therma. What's your name, friend? There was something about a troll that big that made you want to call him friend. Malachite. Find Therma. You've got to find her. I wasn't about to argue with a troll that could twist my head off and use it as a cocktail onion. Okay, friend. What can you tell me about her? Any suggestions of where I should start looking? Used to sing at the Octarine Parrot. Find Therma. Got to find Therma. How can I contact you? Find Therma. That was all he said. I guess he wasn't very bright. But then there's things under damp logs that are brighter than most trolls. The Octorin Parrot. I'd heard of the Octorin Parrot. It made other dives sound appealing. What a place. I could feel the rats in the walls. Hell, I could see the rats in the walls. In fact, some of them had come out of the walls and were sitting at the tables. Why must I be so blue? I couldn't imagine who would pay attention to the notices in a seedy dive like the parrot. But I guess they were of interest to someone. The stage where performers go up in front of a drunken crowd and sell their dignity to earn enough money to barely live on. It made me think that all the discs a stage and all the people players. Unfortunately, I felt like I'd been cast as an extra in my own life story. The bar looked almost as appealing as every other bar in town to me. But the drinks didn't exactly fill you with confidence. The bartender was a half-elf called Mankin, and I knew he wouldn't appreciate someone coming into his place and asking questions. Fortunately, I didn't care what he appreciated. Can I help you? You could sell me a drink. What's your poison? I'd prefer whiskey straight with a whiskey chaser. You didn't come here to drink, did you? Well, I didn't come here for the sparkling conversation. Most of the customers go squeak, squeak. This seems like a nice place. No, it doesn't. It seems like what it is, a wretched hive of scum and villainy. It's tough to get to the top in that field. You could have that on a sign outside. Come to the Octorin Parrot, the most wretched hive of scum and villainy this side of the Ark. Are you being funny? Apparently not. You look a little nervous. I can't shake the feeling that sooner or later someone is going to get their arm cut off. Have you always owned the parrot? No. It used to be a troll bar. I took over the place after the riots. Did you keep any of the staff? Sure, I kept anyone who wanted to stay and wasn't too badly injured by the riots. But there's something about a group of rioting trolls that makes people reluctant to walk back into a place. Or indeed, unable. Did you keep any singers on the staff? Only Sapphire. Tell me about Sapphire. Why don't you just talk to her yourself? Just don't bother her while she's working, all right? It's not often I see a half-elf bartender. Be honest. It's not often you see a half-elf. Okay, you got me. What's the deal? I don't like to talk about it. 
i thought elves were supposed to be irrepressibly likable so that they can get away with whatever acts of cruelty they want like cats well i'm not an elf all right that's the problem isn't it everyone can see that you've got elf blood in you but you've got none of the advantages all you get is people's prejudice i don't like your manner i'm not selling it until later mankin The troll singer was something else. I didn't know what, but she was something. Can we talk? Certainly look that way. Move mouth, waggle tongue. Yeah, it all working. My name's Luton. Sapphire. I could already tell that Sapphire was a troll who could look after herself. I knew I'd have to watch my step around her. It was quite a long way around her too, and not the pretty way. You've been a singer here long. Long enough. Long enough for what? Long enough to want to be singing somewhere else. What do you know about the barman? Mankin? Not much. Know that him a bigger loser than me. How come? He owns this place. At least Sapphire leave if Sapphire wants to. Why don't you leave? Where would I go? No place on disc for a troll like me. Spend our whole lives waiting for break. Just one chance to come our way that can seize in both hands tightly. But it never come. Or if it do, we don't recognize it. So we go back to grind of job we hate. We just keep on ticking each day, one step closer to end. Do you do children's parties? Tell me about yourself. I tell you about myself in four words. Big ideas, small results. Why did you become a singer? Aren't many jobs for a troll like me. And at least this one honest. Is honesty important to you? As much as anything else. I'm guessing nothing much matters to you right now, Sapphire. You catch on quick, Luton. I don't suppose you'd know a big troll called Malachite. Sure. He troll a few words, cause he don't know that many. Do you know where I could find him? Sapphire not seen him in years. But you try Rodan's workshop. He used to hang out there. Have you heard of a troll singer named Therma? She used to work here. Huh. A troll singer named Therma. What's so funny? Huh, nothing. Sure, Sapphire know her. Know where I could find her? Try Morgue. She dead. Her house on Tallow Street collapsed a while back now. We trolls may be tough, but we're not indestructible. Rumors say she was practicing her moves and knocked out load-bearing beam. Brought whole place down on top of her. That's why Sapphire never practiced. That's the only reason? That, and I don't wanna. Know where she's buried? Sapphire don't know, but think they buried her under stage name Madame Lodestone. Madame Lodestone? Sure, on account of how attractive she was. So Therma performed here under the name Madame Lodestone. Who are you? The narrator? I told you that already.
Can you read this? Ask too many questions and a girl loses interest. I'll be back. Hello again. Hello. I don't suppose you know a troll named Malachite. Not Mount Malachite. Describe him. Big. Tall. Stupid. Not very talkative. That's the one. He went down for theft years ago. I seem to remember he had a accomplice. An accomplice? Yeah. He denied it, but we all thought he was working with someone. I don't reckon he was the brains of the outfit. What happened? He escaped. Not that long ago, either. As far as I know, he's on the lam. Why? You've seen him? No. Just interested. Have you heard of a singer called Therma? Never heard of her. Have you ever heard of a troll by the name of Madame Lodestone? Madame Lodestone? No, oh, there's a name I've not heard in quite a while. You know her then? Well, no. But I've heard of her. She died in some sort of construction mishap. A mishap, Nobby. Whatever. Anyway, if memory serves, they put her body in the Salashi Mausoleum. And now she ended up in such an exclusive establishment, but that's how I heard it. That doesn't sound very likely. You did ask. Catch you later, Nobby. The Selachi Family Mausoleum. The Selachi Family Mausoleum was one of the most beautiful buildings I'd ever seen, nestled in an upmarket part of the city of Ankh. It was unguarded because, quite frankly, no one in their right mind would do anything to offend the Salachi family, given their ties to... It wasn't just something that wasn't done, it was also something that wasn't survived. The central atrium of the mausoleum opened up so that you could see the sky. I guess on some nights it must have been quite a beautiful sight, but this wasn't one of those nights. The Salachi family mausoleum was full of tombs. More chambers, annexes, vaults, sepulchres and catacombs than a thesaurus. I tried to find Therma's grave, but it was a waste of time. You'd need to be an expert in heraldry or genealogy to even begin to navigate around it. I'll say this for the nobility, they keep their dead well indexed. I thought I told you never to... Ilsa. I thought I would never see her again.
I prayed that I'd never see her again. But either the gods didn't listen, or they were having a laugh at my expense. Knowing the gods of the disc world, I had a pretty good idea which. Play it again, Sam. You know what? No one's ever going to believe you said that. <laughs>